Alright, so, I'm not exactly sure where the other video stops, so we're at a hypotenuse leg. Remember, hypotenuse leg is for right triangles only. So, hypotenuse leg says that in a right triangle, if the hypotenuse... You know, I bet you guys can say that you can figure this one out, because it's just like the other ones. If the hypotenuse and leg are congruent to the hypotenuse and corresponding leg and I'll underline corresponding because they have to be the corresponding leg. It, you can't just have one leg congruent to the other leg, to another leg. They have to be the same leg. So you have to make sure. So if the hypotenuse and leg in one are congruent to the hypotenuse, well, the hypotenuse is always corresponding to the hypotenuse because it's the largest side in the right triangle. And the corresponding leg in a second right triangle... then the triangles are congruent. I'm going to chance it. All right. So far, so good. Now, here's what it looks like. You take a right triangle. Then you have another right triangle. So, this is hypotenuse leg. Now, that's the hypotenuse, right? And that's the hypotenuse. It's always the longest side. It's always the side opposite the right angle. Now, if I said this is the leg, which leg am I going to go for? What's going to be the corresponding leg to this leg here? Is it this, the first leg here, or the second leg? The second leg. So that's where you have to make that determination and make that decision. Now, can you guys give me a reason why? Well, not necessarily. Well, we know that they're going to be congruent triangles. What's the one theorem that's really special for a right triangle? I'm hearing some really bad answers. You guys need to be better than that. Um, the Pythagorean theorem. If I know two sides, can I calculate the third side? So, if I know these two sides, can I calculate the third side? Absolutely. If I know these two sides, can I calculate the third side? If these two sides are equal, and these two sides are equal, and their values are the same, I'm doing the same problem twice because I'm going to get the same answer. So, that's going to force this. So, hypotenuse leg is really side, side, side. It's side, side, side for right angles. But it relieves us of the necessity of actually um, calculating the third side, which we could easily do. Now, any questions on hypotenuse leg? Nope. No? We're good? All right, so we have this, which you will refer to and hopefully use a lot of because these are the tests that we are going to always try to build. You're going to want to build to side, side, side. You're going to want to build to side, angle, side. 
Use all the rules that you know that you have at your disposal to do this. Now, some other things that you need to be really concerned about uh, while you're doing this. So, on the next page, um, we'll call it Other Concerns. The first concern would be that shared sides are congruent. And here's what I mean. You got a triangle here and a triangle here. If that's A, B, C, and D, AC is a shared side. Why would I call it a shared side? If this is triangle one and that's triangle two, what's special about AC? It's part of both triangles. So segment AC is a side in both triangles. And AC is congruent to itself. And the reason why, it's a shared side. Or we can call this the identity property. So instantly when you see a shared side, you can put a congruency mark there. And that's going to help out a lot because once you see the shared side, you're, you have one of the sides. So that might be all you need. That might be all you need to... Uh, show that uh, angles are congruent or triangles are congruent. Two, remember the triangle sum theorem. Measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle three is equal to 180 degrees. Remember that theorem. That's one that's going to help you out especially when you're looking for missing angles, but you need that angle to prove, say you need an angle to prove side angle side, but you have the two other angles, and you desperately need angle one, well, you can, you can actually do some algebra in order to solve that. Um, three, the exterior angle theorem. It comes in many forms, but if that's 4 and that's 1 and 2 and 3, measure of angle 4 is equal to measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3. The exterior angle is equal to the two remote interior angles. about as good as I can zoom in. But you got to know those. Those are theorems that we've already talked about. You guys did pretty good on the quiz on that. Naming? Uh, we're going to probably have to quiz again on that. Naming triangles? Yeah, you guys did poor on that. But the, the math, you guys did okay on. That's an exterior angle. Measure of angle 4 is equal to the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3. Calm down. That's about as much as I can zoom in. Alright. Um, fourth thing. Vertical angles are congruent by the vertical angle theorem.
So, a lot of times, I call this... a bow tie problem. And that's just something I kind of think about because as soon as you get a bow tie or something that looks like a bow tie, and let me move that up. Let me see if I can make that a little bit nicer. As soon as you see that you have a bow tie, angles one and two here, angle one is congruent to angle two instantaneously. So, that's another thing that's going to help you out. And five. Linear pairs. If you have one and two here, there that's a linear pair. So we can say the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two is equal to how much? 180 degrees. And this is the linear pair theorem. So that's another thing that you have at your disposal. Now the nice thing is, the work that you're going to get right off the bat is going to be non-numeric, where you're just looking to see if things fit into side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, 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 side, or hypotenuse leg. But once we get into the numbers, all this stuff is going to come into play. You don't need numbers to know that. These, you require angle values. This, you don't need numbers. But it's helpful when you know you have numbers. This one, you need numbers. You need values of those angles. Yeah, that'd be angle one, and that'd be angle two. Absolutely, because of vertical angles. But one plus two is 180 degrees. Angle one equals angle one. Measure of angle one equals the measure of angle one, but that doesn't help us. But one plus two, because a lot of times, if you're dealing with an exterior angle, you're trying to get into the angle itself, or into the triangle. Because all our tests are about either side lengths or the interior angles of the triangle. So a lot of times, if you have an exterior angle, you have to figure out a way to get inside and find a measure of the angle. And the best way to do that is through the linear pair. It's an entryway. So you can consider this an entryway into a triangle. And that's usually what they're there for. All right, so now what this is called, this whole thing, and I'm going to zoom out totally and just show you the whole thing. This is, and I know you're not, it's not going to be the whole thing, but it's going to be this. This I'm going to try and take a picture and hopefully make, yeah, all right, I took a picture, a screenshot of that, um, these are the big things that you need to prove that triangles are congruent to each other, and we're going to start uh, dealing with this right about now so I'm gonna end the video and you guys I'm gonna hand out the packets and we're gonna start going over some of the packets